What's going on, Paisanos? V here. Come at you guys. Well, on a market watch today. Before I begin, make sure to check me out over on Instagram. Uh, links will be down below. Go ahead and hit that follow button. I post a bunch of stuff like this. Uh, this is me when I got back from National, showing the gorgeous Brandon Despy deck before anyone else knew, and talking about how I got my invite and all that jazz. Uh, once again, I'm definitely going to be posting more on Instagram. And I really appreciate you guys go over, hit the like button, all that stuff, and uh, yes, yeah, get to the market watch. Oh, if you're new to the channel, if you're new to the channel, Hit the like button, subscribe button, and comment down below, Paisanos. I appreciate that. Say anything. Literally anything. All right. Triple Tactics Dross out of Photon Hypernova. Uh, obviously got an Ultimate Rare reprint in the upcoming OTS set. So the price went down. It was holding a price point roughly around $85. The current value is at $62. Now we'll go look in the month chart. Uh, so it gives us a better indication. It will hit a dip, as you can see over here. And it's actually going to start stabilizing. You see it over here. Now we'll be fighting. We'll go back up. You know, to be honest with you, I think this kind of yells to me like what happened with Forbidden Droplet. When Forbidden Droplet came out with a lot of money, reprint Ultimate Rare, price dropped. Eventually, we're going to get an Ultra Rare reprint of maybe even Thrust, hopefully. But until that, the price of Droplets actually started going up despite the fact there was an Ultimate Rare. Why? Well, Ultimate Rares at OTS packs are really hard to pull and really expensive. Uh, and in the case of Forbidden Droplet, the Ultimate Rare was a lot of money and the Secret Rare actually started recovering up until the announcement of the ultra rare so i do think thrust will start going back up in value basically don't panic sell this card wait for the ultimate rare hopefully you can get it and uh stand by the uh, secret rare until then because the card's still really good so i wanted to point this out because it's something i found really interesting so pharaoh's rare is a weird card i think we all agree on that rarity i don't hate it i don't love it i just don't know about it you see pharaoh's rare in king's court Secret Pharaoh's Rare, for the most part, was the money rarity. The Secret Pharaoh's Rare. See over there, once again, Secret Pharaoh's Rare, Secret Pharaoh's Rare, and then Ultra Pharaoh's Rare was subsequently a lot less money, right? Looking over at Magnus of Ravens, the Ultra Pharaoh's Rare is the money one, and the Secret Pharaoh's Rare isn't. I'm not sure if anyone else made this, like, distinction. I've talked about this forever ago. Uh, I don't know why... The, the rarity is different. It could be, once again, Konami just decided to be cute and put less Ultra Pharaoh's Rare in Magnificent Mavens, making it more worth more money. But once again, that doesn't make much sense because you would think they would do everything in order because order kind of is what you really need in a business. But once again, really weird. I just want to point that out. I have no idea what's going on with that. But, you know, one thing about Konami is with Pharaoh's Rare, CRs, uh, uh, Starlight Rares, Core Century Rares, all the rarities in this game. Um, one thing is for sure is the fact that the Starlight Rare rarity is losing value. Not all the cards, but a lot of cards. Here, let me show you. Pot of Plus Rarity Starlight Rare at all-time high was roughly around $639. The current value of that card right now is $475, despite the fact that it's still a heavily played card. Why is the Starlight Rare going down in value? We're not done yet. Chamber Dragon Maid, another Starlight Rare of Eternity Code, was $423. The value, $380. Now, this isn't with every Starlight Rare, but a good amount of them. Uh, you see one over here, Sky Strike Ace Rose. This was always $300. And now you're seeing about $284. It's still a good percentage down. If you look at the past month, it says it went up at $309, but you can see over here it's not. Uh, nevertheless, the Starlight Rares are going down because the incentivization from Konami, well, from the play base to Konami, is why should we buy Starlight Rares if you're going to make a quarter century rare and kill the value of Starlight Rares? I've been talking about, the, talking about this for a while, and I really just want to show you some more proof. But we're not done yet, okay? Because what will stop Konami from making a quarter century version of 10,000 Dragons? Or Starlight versions of 10,000 Dragons? Which, let's be honest with you, that shit looks kind of Starlight Rare to me. Anyway, the value of this card has been going down in the past three months you can see over here with a four, almost a $1,400 market price the value is touching a thousand dollars in the past month alone it says two twelve forty eight, 48 but once again it's touching a thousand dollars even 1100 after that one has been sold so value is going down the drain and we'll talk about Dragon Mates in a second, but I really want to point the fact that, like, a lot of these cards that are high rarity cards are losing their value in this game because Konami is being greedy. If you saw my initials, I said it. Konami's trying to make 20 bucks a day 
even though they're probably gonna lose 30 bucks tomorrow. It's not really smart business to make reprints of higher rarity cards that are all higher rarity. Imagine back in the day, Konami made a ghost version of Star's Dragon, okay? And then a couple of months later, it said, oh, by the way, now we have a ghostier version. It's like ghost rare, but it's ghostier rare. Who wants to buy it? You see what I'm saying? The value of Star's Dragon Ghost Rare First Edition Original Print as well as Genesis today we were, we would be worth way less because Konami just added another competing rarity. Why? For a cash grab. And that's what I think we're seeing here with these rarities. I think Konami needs to come out with a statement, in my opinion, to establish confidence in the players that are looking to buy high rarity cards. Myself included, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not in the mood to buy high rarity cards because what's my incentivization if Konami was the only, even the highest rarity, Starlight Rare in the game right now, Konami can easily just make that value go down. It's kind of scary. I think Ultimate Rares are the best bet for now, as Konami, for the most part, hasn't really dove into that market too heavily with alternate versions of, of Ultimate Rares. So we're kind of safe for that for now, but we're not out of it. Then we have uh, Deck Cores. Now, one thing I want to say, even though I'm per if I was to buy Dragon Maid today, I wouldn't buy a Starlight Rare Chamber Dragon Maid. Secret Rare Chamber Dragon Maid isn't that bad in value. I mean, the value, the market's a little bit all over the place, but this is a price differential of $24.50 to $27.50. That's like really nothing. In fact, Chamber Dragon Maid is $19. I'm not saying run out and buy your Dragon Maid Core, but I'm saying if you are buying a Dragon Maid Core, this is a great time to buy it because nobody's really looking at it right now. It's relatively inexpensive. Even the Yu-Gi-Oh! Day Field Center is like 20 bucks. It's pretty good. Uh, obviously, it has gold rares. Don't buy those ugly ass. They're so ugly. But for the most part, Dragon Maids are relatively inexpensive from what they used to be. Like I said, I don't recommend you buying a Star Rare Chain with Dragon Maid. Unless you just don't care at all. I just said, screw it, V. I just, I'm just going to do it and whatever. It's your money. Uh, but just something really interesting. You know, with the next set of Yu-Gi-Oh, which is Duelist Nexus, uh, Infernables are going to get a boost. So we're seeing a lot of uh, Infernable cards go up in value. Now, to be honest, we don't know if Infernables are going to be worth any bit of money, but we do know Infernables is definitely something a lot of people are looking into. With that, cards like Infernable Arms Durandal is actually rising in value. It's roughly around $14 here on TC Player. You don't need to buy the Ultra Rare. You can also buy the Super Rare, which is like $0.14. Cents. You can get the Rare version, by the way. So there are other rarities. Konami kind of almost did play as a favor by saying, hey, listen, we're going to mess around with the rarities, scuff rarities up. So I'm not sure what you guys are doing watching my video. What I would recommend, what I'm doing is, if I was playing for Nobles, I would buy Super Rare during those 14 cents. Who cares? Let's be real. It doesn't matter. None of this matters. I only will go max rarity on certain deck cores. Heroes, Mermels, uh, 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 maybe even Dragon Mates I might pick up. Maybe we'll go max rarity. Who knows? But that's only deck cores because I like put to the side. That's, that's my thing. And comment down below. Let me know what deck core you have that you do this for. But with Konami coming out with Duelist Nexus, uh, why would you go max rarity on Infernobles if it's already one bit now? Two, Monarch, you're going to get a bunch of reprints. And three, a higher rarity reprints that Konami is going to make you go after as a chase of rare. We don't need to chase them all the time. In fact, we can play this smart. Get the cards that are old and have good value and not really focus on the, some of these other cards because why? Which is, there's no really incentivization anymore. Infernoble Knight Emperor Charles out of Rise of the Duels Ultra Rare is currently roughly around six dollars. You can see over here, she player six bucks for a first edition version. Now, with that said, you get a common for sixteen cents. Up to you. Uh, Heritage, of, Her Heritage of the Chalice is the only one that actually has a lot of a lot of value. Soul Fusion, as well as the Prismatic Secret, is roughly around eleven bucks to twelve dollars each, respectively. So that is the money one. There's no w getting around that. At the moment, uh, to be honest with you, once again, if you are looking to play for Nobles, you will need this card. Uh, it's definitely a great card, and once again, it, it, it does make it easier buying low rarity of everything else, especially if you're not keeping this deck for long. Then we have Forbidden Droplet. So I know I talked about it earlier, but Forbidden Droplet in general is relatively inexpensive. Forbidden Droplet has a price point roughly around $12 at the lowest, whether it's Brothers of Legend Secret Rare or the Prismatic Secret Rare out of 10 of Pharaoh Gods. Let's double check the price real quickly, just, just in case. The value has been going down heavily. Uh, yeah, it's about 12 bucks for this. Not a bad value for Forbidden Droplet. It definitely fell off in popularity, but still a relatively good card. And I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of players moving forward might actually start picking it up again. So keep an eye out for this card. One card that I will say that I think is a great card to pick up right now that nobody's talking about or looking at is Fantastical Dragon Phantasmae. 
Yes, the meta is kind of weird right now, and as we move into a new banners as well as new set releases, we're gonna get a new meta. And it doesn't it doesn't take long before players realize, wait a minute, that's a link deck, that's a link deck, that's a link deck, that's a link deck, and every player gets together and just buys a card like Fantastical Dragon Phantasme. It's also really good against a bunch of decks. One being, well, particularly Sky Strikers. Sky Strikers hate Phantasme. It's a plus one against them. Not only is it a plus one against them, it really fucks up their shit badly. So, I think it's a great card in general. Obviously, it had a huge pump real quickly and just started going down recently. Uh, if you want to go ahead and buy a limited version, uh, let's see. This one's over here is about 12 bucks. If you want to buy a first gen version of the card, first gen is going to run you about $14. Not a big difference, but after that $14 is gone, it does start hitting roughly around $19 of copy. I've never sold mines, even though they were 60 so I should have sold them. I've always kept my first gen versions of Fantastical Dragon Phantasme. I just think the card's a really good card, and just because it's not good now, doesn't mean it's not going to be C play or be good in the future. And that money I just mentioned is too much money for you, no big deal, because the card's worth $2 over here. Um... For the uh, 10 of Lost Memories as an Ultra Rare, not a bad looking Ultra Rare to be honest with you. And the value of this card is around 2 bucks, 3 with shipping. So it is, they do have a cheaper version for everybody. Once again, it's an Ultra Rare, it doesn't look terrible to be honest with you. And I definitely think something players might want to consider moving forward. Anyway, I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. Make sure to hit the like button. Your boy V, and you guys all have a great day.